Am I the asshole for charging my friend's rent then keeping the money for myself? This will be my first year in college. When I got accepted, the first person I told was my uncle. We're very close because he took care of me when I was little because of my parents' crazy work schedules. Anyway, my grades were good enough to get me in but not enough to get me any scholarships. That means I'll have to take out loans for tuition and work for my expenses. When my uncle found out, he said I should just concentrate on school instead of working but my dad, his brother, said that money is tight right now so my parents can't help me out as much as they want to. My uncle has investment properties all over the place so he said it's not a big deal for him to buy another one near my campus, which he did. Then he had contractors renovate the house so emerging in there is brand new. He even had them install a bay window in the master bedroom just for me and I got to pick out everything else like the carpet and counters. He told me he wants me to concentrate on school and not work. Instead, I can be his landlady and rent out the other three bedrooms and keep that money to fund my expenses. I have a group of friends who are attending the same school so I made a deal with them. Studio apartments are going between $900-$1500 not including utilities, around the campus with the expensive ones being closer. My uncle's house is one street over from campus so I can literally walk to class every day. I'm charging my friends $700 per room or if they double up, $350 per person per month and split utilities evenly. They all jumped at the offer and no one asked any questions until recently when one of them asked me how much the overall rent was. I was honest and told them about my uncle and our deal. That blew up in my face because now every one of my friends are calling me greedy for charging them rent then pocketing the money. We're all in a huge fight and they all want to either pay nothing or throw a couple hundred in for utilities. I cried to my uncle but he said now that I'm an adult, I need to make my own adult decision. He'll stand by my decision. I don't want to lose my friends but I don't want to disappoint my family with bad grades either. I thought I was being fair with rent but literally all of my friends are calling me a greedy awe. Update. Thank you for reading my post and giving me advice. I went to my uncle, this time without crying, and told him some of the advice given on here and asked him for his advice. This time he didn't tell me to make my own adult decisions and told me he was waiting for this conversation. This is what we agreed to do. I texted all of my friends, former, and told them because of the arguments and hurt feelings, we can no longer live together. My uncle offered to work out a lease for me in the beginning but I refused because these were my friends. Because no one signed a lease, we didn't have to break any. I was worried about them suing but my uncle said that the law in our state requires anything to do with real estate be in writing. Unlike other situations, real estate deals cannot be oral so I'm good. This time I took him up on the offer of creating a lease for me to have new tenants sign. We spent the morning researching rent prices and making ads. My friends and I made the agreement at the beginning of summer. Now that there's only a couple of weeks left until school starts, we found almost nothing within three miles of campus. There were some options further out but nothing was cheaper than $1,200 for a shared room and that was in an old house with window AC units and five miles from campus. When the house was being renovated, my uncle had central air and heating installed. We came to a rent price of $1,300 and placed ads in several places including FB. Within an hour, I got a dozen messages. It's 4 p.m. now and I literally have over 100 messages. Many of them don't even need to see the house in person. Based off of the pictures and location, they want to submit their application today. Some even offered to send me the deposit and one person said her dad will pay me the full semester amount today. My uncle gave me some advice that was exactly what you guys said. Never mix money with friends or I might lose both and never tell anybody my business. He told me not to lie, just keep quiet. Thanks again and have a great weekend you wonderful people. You're insane just replace them and charge the same rent for other people. Not the asshole. If they don't like it they don't have to stay, they can rent elsewhere and you can rent the rooms to other students. Not the asshole. You gave them the hand and now they want to take the arm. I'm sure they will regret it when they get evicted and have to pay much more. You are the asshole. You should have been up front from the start. This has revealed to them a weird dynamic that makes them feel like you're only friends with them to make money off of them. Yes, they're getting a good deal. No, you wouldn't have had to be up front if you recruited strangers, but these are, were your friends. You should have let them decide whether to live with you knowing where their money is going. They thought it was going to some anonymous landlord, and instead it's going to someone who doesn't even invest in the house. 
It's honestly so slimy that your uncle's gift to you is your friend's debt. If they knew all that from the start and then suddenly they have an issue with it, you wouldn't be an asshole at all. Your friends are trying to use your friendship to take advantage of you. You're already technically paying them to live with you. If they're paying $700 but an equivalent room is worth $1,000, you're effectively paying them $300 to live with you. What they're asking for is for you to pay $1,000 for them to live with you. We've seen this scenario so many times in this sub. It doesn't matter WHO owns the property, it only matters what comparable rents are. Am I the asshole for telling my mom she doesn't deserve my forgiveness? I always thought my relationship with my mother was healthy but as I got older I started to realize that she can be very manipulative and gaslights me a lot. For example, she might do something that would upset me. When we try to talk it out, she says stuff like, I am old and hard for me to change. You have to be the bigger person and forgive me. How can you get mad at me? I'm your mother. And I am old. You are young and full of energy. You shouldn't be yelling at me. She says I am yelling but most of the time I am not yelling. And because I am too lazy to stay mad and I loved her so much I always forgave her. Another thing about her is that she doesn't listen to me. When I tell her to stop doing something because it upsets me, she says, okay, but does it again following week. I tell her to stop again, she says okay just for her to do it again next week. She repeats this until I am full on yelling and screaming asking her why won't she stop. Then like I said before she will act like she is the victim and starts crying. So I end up apologizing. I thought this is something I just have to deal with. But I think my love for her died last week. I was visiting my friends in Europe for two weeks and during the trip my mom was staying at my place because she wanted to see couple doctors near my house. She lives couple hours away, when I came home, the wardrobe near my entrance was gone. It was in my bedroom. Before I left, she tried to move it twice and both times I firmly said don't do it. She has already left my place by then so I called her why the heck she moved it when I said don't. Her answer was, oh I knew you would be mad but it was in the way. That's when I realized my mother doesn't respect me. She knew I wouldn't appreciate the action but she did it anyways. All this time, I thought my mother was too stupid to remember what upsets me and that's why she kept repeating the unwanted actions. Turned out she just flat out doesn't care. And she can do this because I always forgive her no matter what she does. I didn't write here but she has done some messed up things before. I hung up the phone because I was beyond angry. She called me today asking me if I am still mad at her and I should get over it by now. I told her that it is not the fact she moved my wardrobe but the fact she doesn't respect me as a person and doesn't care about my feelings at all. She OFC reminded me that I am yelling at an old lady and I should be nicer. So I reminded her that she used to yell and beat me when I was little until she was tired and her anger went away and that is a lot worse. Because she was yelling at a kid who didn't know better. She gave me a half-ass apology like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Forgive me now okay? Then tried to gaslight me by saying, I can't believe you are saying this to me right now. So I told her I do not want to hear her fake apology and she doesn't deserve my forgiveness and hung up the phone. Am I the asshole? Yeah. Not the asshole, shit on her bed and the moment she discovers it ask for her forgiveness, then see her philosophy changes. Not the asshole. I'm sorry you feel that way. Forgive me now okay? The mother of non-pologies which blames you instead of her. Yeah, she doesn't deserve your forgiveness. Not the asshole. Congratulations on taking the first step. It will be tough and you'll want to just go back to how it was by be strong. Shore up your defenses, talk to friends you trust or go see a therapist. Not the asshole. Simple as. Nope you're not the asshole. It is royal pain to have parent that does not respect you. Perhaps it is time for you to cut ties with your mother by refusing to call her or have her come to your place. Am I the asshole for not continuing the punishment our ex set for our son at my house? The punishment was issued because our 8-year-old son faked being sick the day of his dad's wedding so he wouldn't be there. Ex got married last weekend. My ex was furious when he found out and the truth came out because he went home to check on our son in the afternoon and found our son perfectly fine after saying that morning that his stomach hurt really bad and he felt like he was going to be sick and actually pretended to have puked at some point that morning. So ex and his wife were upset but decided if he wasn't feeling good he should stay home. The babysitter also told ex our son seemed fine once everyone was gone and he'd been normal. 
Our son admitted it to his dad when asked directly and X grounded him for a month and told him he would not be having any kind of fun when he missed something as important as his wedding, and the day their family became bigger. When the exchange day took place X sent me this long, in-depth email about what our son had done, the punishment he had set, and that he expected me to continue the punishment at my house so our son could be grounded for four consecutive weeks instead of spreading it over two months. I spoke to our son when we were home and he admitted to me that he was really upset about his dad getting married and the fact things at his house were now permanent and that he didn't love that his stepmom was now his stepmom and her daughters were now his stepsisters. I told him I would make him an appointment with his therapist. She got him in quickly and they had a good talk. I also decided not to continue the grounding at my house. I notified my ex. He was pissed. His wife was pissed. They told me mine and ex's son had disrespected both of them and had disrespected his new sisters by avoiding the celebration of them all becoming one family. I told them that Callum, son, was struggling with all the changes and he's had trouble adjusting to us no longer being together and us both having new partners who have other kids. That I had gotten him therapy for that very reason and that ex chose not to bring our son when he has him, as is his right, but I also have the right to take a different approach to this. X said that our son never told him these things and I should be backing him up. I pointed out our son did tell him. It was two years ago but he did tell him and he gave him attitude for it. X said it was no excuse and I should help punish him. I told him I want our son to tell me things so I will always try to find ways to help him without punishing him. X and his wife say I'm an asshole and I should continue the punishment. She said I would not allow my son to dictate my life or that I would not like him skipping something like that of mine. I told her I delayed furthering my relationship until my son is more comfortable and I did so because he wasn't behaving the best around them and we talked and I realized he'd need help in time. Am I the asshole? The, not the asshole. The kid's 8 years old. I pulled similar stunts to avoid going places. Not to mention the fact he has a valid reason for why. Well now we all know why you divorced him, must have been hell married to that. In ta. Your son probably did have a stomach ache because he was anxious and his feelings were so jumbled it was true. Then, he got better because the anxiety was gone cuz he didn't have to go in the end. Your ex is punishing your child for having emotions and feelings? I can see why he's your ex. Not the asshole. The beatings will continue until moral improves. If your ex wants your son to embrace his new family, he is going about it the wrong way. I doubt this was the first time your son showed disapproval of the new relationship and all it entailed. I hope you are doing all you can to protect your son. Not the asshole you ex and his wife will get a lot further with your son using a carrot instead of a stick. Not sure why so many people in these situations don't see that. You can't punish a child into loving you. Am I the asshole or am I not up to speed on societal norms? There's a girl at my job who likes me. She's always finding excuses to come around my work area to talk to me, she's flirtatious, etc. I think she's attractive too, we've worked at the same company for a little over a year now and have talked for the last 8 or so months. I just try not to talk to or date the people I work with. That's a can of worms that I've opened once before at a previous job and it blew up in my face, so I decided never again, with some exceptions of course. But ever since then I hadn't dated anyone from work in years and this girl would have been the first one since and I was only willing to break my rule for her because she showed constant genuine interest, wasn't hypersexual in her approach or flirtation, and she initiated making it very obvious her interest in me. Like clockwork she comes to my area and starts talking to me, she's flirting, I'm flirting back, then she slides her phone across my desk with her snapchat open and she says, we should talk outside of work, you should give me your snap. Smiling I responded, I don't want to give you my snap, but I'll give you my number. She tells me that she doesn't want to give me her number just yet, but if we talk enough and things go well on snap then we can exchange numbers. I tell her, no, thank you, and hand her phone back to her. Her smile drops and she walks away. Later one of the male co-workers comes up to me and asks what I did to make her cry, I responded, nothing, she wanted my snapchat and I wanted to give her my phone number instead and she didn't want that. I don't think that's anything worth crying over. He then proceeded to tell me how much of a fucking asshole I am for not giving her my snapchat and how I should have just given it to her. I explained to him that I don't really care about his opinion and that I find it weird that he's so distraught about something that doesn't involve him at all and he storms off. Then as I'm in line waiting to clock out another male coworker confronts me about it, calling me a fucking asshole. They kept using both of those words lol. 
because she liked me and I should have just given her my Snapchat. I respond that I don't really trust having conversations through most social media apps, but especially through Snapchat because the conversations automatically delete after a while and using an app like that just feels like someone is hiding something from someone else and that's something that I do not care to be a part of so unless we met through online dating then it's either phone number or nothing at all. He tells me that I'm old for thinking things are still that way with exchanging phone numbers and how exchanging social media is the normal thing to do now. I tell him that I don't really care. He asks me about her feelings. I tell him she'll get over it. I'm only one guy. A little rejection is good for her character. So, am I the asshole? I'm old but I don't get this. If she likes you so much why won't she give you her phone number? It's not like you two just met. Not the asshole. Everything you said and did sounds totally reasonable to me. Not the asshole. You described a strange interaction. You also dodged a bullet from her reaction. Not the asshole you shouldn't need any reason, excuse. No should mean no. Not the asshole and good for you standing your ground. Never break your own rules m8. We set up our rules for a good reason.